moderate but greater mitral regurgitation is the most prevalent valvular heart disease among adults in the United States. Although surgical mitral valve repair remains the standard of care for symptomatic MR, the increasing number of patients who present with contraindications to surgery or who are at high operative risk poses an ongoing therapeutic challenge. In turn, percutaneous technologies have evolved over the past decade as feasible and safe alternatives to open-heart surgery in select patients. Concurrently, multimodality imaging has become crucial in both patient selection and procedural guidance. The former is based on non-invasive imaging techniques such as TTE, TEE, and MDCT that allow thorough assessments of morphology, quantification of regurgitation, optimization of timing of intervention, device selection, and planning. Similarly, fluoroscopy and TEE provide essential intraoperative imaging guidance for proper device deployment. Cardiac imaging underlies proper patient selection for TMBI and guides clinicians on the optimal timing of intervention. The process starts with a thorough understanding of the various mechanisms of MR, followed by anatomic evaluation of the mitral valve and grading of MR severity. 2D TTE, TEE, and stress echocardiography have become invaluable in not only diagnosing and managing mitral valve disease, but also identifying patients that may benefit from earlier intervention. Once MR has been detected, evaluation often begins with an assessment of the mechanism of MR. Consensus statements from numerous guidelines generally categorize MR as either primary or secondary. Primary, also called degenerative or organic MR, occurs as a result of an intrinsic degenerative process of the valve leaflets in patients with MV prolapse. In contrast, secondary or functional MR occurs in patients with valves that have been stretched by tethering or left ventricular dilatation. The valve remains anatomically normal, but apical and lateral distraction of the papillary muscles from ventricular dilatation leads to leaflet tethering and central regurgitation due to failure of coaptation. MV dysfunction and the etiology of MR are characterized mainly by TTE and TEE. These modalities allow morphological analyses of the mitral valve and subvalvular apparatus. 3D TEE mitral anatomy correlates well with findings during open heart surgery. Echocardiography also permits segmental analysis of the leaflet scallops and commissures, thus allowing the interventional surgeon to precisely locate the focus of valvular dysfunction. This is particularly true in cases of primary MR, where echocardiography can make the distinction between Ballos disease, such as multi-segment redundancy, billowing a thickened leaflet tissue, and fibroelastic deficiency, including total rupture involving a single scallop. The valvular complex consists of the anterior and posterior leaflets, a fibrous annulus, and chordate tendon and papillary muscles. Key TTE views that identify anatomic and functional abnormalities of one or more of these components include the 2D long axis view, the short axis view, the four chamber view. Similarly, important TE views include the cross commissural view and the 3D on face view. In addition to echocardiography, MBCT is increasingly becoming an important modality to characterize anatomy and evaluate the feasibility of TMBI. EKG-gated MDCT allows retrospective acquisition of images throughout the cardiac cycle. These are then reconstructed at each 5%, 10% of the RR interval in multiple reformation planes. MV parameters that need to be assessed with MDCT with successful TMVR are being actively investigated and empirically include mitral annular dimensions, mitral annular calcification, the foot length, the distance between papillary muscles, LVOT area, and the course of the coronary sinus and circumflex coronary artery relative to the annular plane. MDCT also has a role in assessing mitral annular geometry and the risk of LVOTO following TMBR. Numerous studies have postulated this risk arises from the creation of a neo-LVOT as a result of protrusion of the TMBR device, an anterior mitral leaflet into the native LVOT. The American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association recommend TDE and TEE as the first-line imaging modalities for MR assessment. In concordance with this, baseline MR should be characterized using multi-parametric and multi-modality imaging that allows for both qualitative and quantitative evaluation of MR. Color Doppler imaging is the most commonly used qualitative technique of assessing MR. Large eccentric jets that adhere, swirl, and reach the posterior wall of the left atrium usually signify severe MR. Furthermore, the presence of a large proximal flow convergence 
a denser, triangular, continuous wave Doppler signal of the Rigogen and Jet, and Vena contractor with greater than 0.7 centimeters suggests significant MR. Although useful, these measurements are highly variable as they are dependent on technical and hemodynamic parameters. Severity can also be objectively assessed using quantitative variables such as regurgitant and volume, fraction, and EROA. These measurements can be performed using the PISA method, quantitative Doppler analysis of 3D color Doppler vena contractor planimetry. In recent years, CMR has emerged as an adjunct to primary echocardiographic analysis. The ASC recommends the use of CMR when TTE or TEE is felt to be unsatisfactory or when discrepancies exist between MR severity and clinical findings. Reports of comparative studies suggest concordance rates between 50% and 90% between the two modalities in defining the severity of MR using semi-quantitative parameters. Devices that act on the mitral leaflets include MitraClip, Neocord, and the Harpoon Repair Systems. We'll focus on the MitraClip system. This is a percutaneous edge-to-edge -edge repair system that has gained FDA approval for both degenerative and functional MR and is the most commonly used TMVI technology. Anatomic inclusion criteria in the original Everest trial, as defined using echocardiography, included non-dramatic valve morphology, MVA greater than 4 cm squared, flail gap less than 10 mm, flail width less than 15 mm, coaptation depth less than 11 mm, coaptation depth greater than 2 mm, and central pathology at the A2P2 interface. Since 2009, however, clinical experience has demonstrated the success of TMVI with mitroclip in patients who do not strictly meet the aforementioned criteria, and there currently exist few absolute anatomic contraindications to its use. Relative echocardiographic contraindications include calcification of the grasping zone, MVA less than 3.5 cm squared, baseline mean mitral grading greater than 4 mm Hg, leaflet grasping length less than 7 mm, and carbon tier 3A physiology. TE is also used for anatomic screening and procedural planning. For instance, the biplane commissural view interrogates the MV across the commissures and can be useful for analyzing valvular anatomy at the grasping location and planning the grasping view. Longer and redundant leaflets, along with larger coaptation gaps, may necessitate use of the XTR system as opposed to the NTR device. Intraoperative imaging guidance for virtually all TMVI procedures is predicated upon 2D and 3D TEE and porosity. With regards to the mitroclip system, the initial and arguably the most important step prior to mitroclip placement is the transeptal puncture. This is usually performed in a mid-posterior location within the interatrial septum, approximately 4 to 4.5 centimeters basal to the annular plane. For puncture localization, biplane TE imaging allows concomitant visualization of the bicable and four-chamber views. This may also be facilitated by the use of fusion imaging systems that overlay TE images onto fluoroscopy. 3D imaging of needle tenting at the interatrial septum then confirms the puncture trajectory. Device extrusion from the delivery sheet should then be visualized to avoid contact injury with the cumulin ridge, left atrial appendage, or LA wall. The clip delivery system is straddled across the commissures and the clip is opened under 3D TE visualization to ensure its proper orientation perpendicular to the commissures. Following confirmation of clip position, the biplane commissure will explain to LVOT views the device is passed into the left ventricle. Biplane color doppler imaging is then used to confirm clip placement and the MR jet location, the clip is pulled back toward the leaflets. Live color doppler imaging may be used to confirm MR reduction as the clip arms are closed. After leaflet grasping, TE3D shows a tissue bridge that confirms optimal leaflet grasping at a suitable location. Involvements in improvements in pulmonary vein flow are indicative of significant MR reduction. At this point, transmitral CWD may be used to assess any increase in gradients which can be rectified by clip repositioning and regrasping. Post-implant assessment is crucial following percutaneous edge-to-edge repair. Multiplanar 3D reconstruction permits planimetry at each mitral orifice. Areas are then added to yield the total MVA following clip placement. Post-clip MR can be assessed using 2D color Doppler imaging and 3D color Doppler direct planimetry of the VC areas. 
A recent study showed that post-procedural VC area less than 0.27 cm squared was associated with clinical improvements in NYHA functional class of 30-day follow-up. Finally, com complications such as pericardial effusion, clip detachment, and leaflet damage should be assessed via TEE. As with the previous mitroclip system described, successful TMBR relies on multimodality imaging for patient selection, procedural guidance, and post-procedural assessment. In particular, pre-procedural evaluation relies heavily on a comprehensive MDCT analysis that allows measurements of MB dimensions and geometry, along with anatomic assessment of the structure surrounding the landing zone of the TMBR device. Relevant annular dimensions include the intercommissural and septolateral diameters, area, perimeter, displacement, and tenting area and volume. Annular sizing is performed in both end systole and end diastole. CT-based measurement requirements also vary by device specifications. For instance, assessment of cordial leaflet anatomy is imperative for TMVR devices that anchor via leaflet grasping. On the other hand, to gauge the risk of obstruction during positioning of valves that anchor behind the leaflets or trigones, evaluation of the distance to papillary muscles may be important. Furthermore, to predict the risk of LVOTO, some authors have suggested MDCT-based reconstruction and creation of a virtual D-shaped annulus defined by the intertrigonal distance. Finally, the presence of MAC should be noted and characterized, and this may impede proper anchoring. In conclusion, with the evolving landscape of transcatheter mitral valve interventions, the paradigm of treating patients with severe MR is changing. As evidenced here, this burgeoning field of transcatheter mitral therapies relies heavily on multimodality cardiac imaging. Indeed, it is imperative that the interventional surgeon of the future be well versed in the roles of echocardiography, MDCT, fluoroscopy, and most recently CMR, in pre procedural patient selection, procedural planning, intra procedural imaging based guidance of the procedure, and post procedural assessment of mitral valve morphology and function. As outcomes of TMVI improve, cardiac imaging will undoubtedly continue to play an essential role in the success of percutaneous mitral valve repair and replacement.